Hello and thank you for joining this Onc Live Peer Exchange entitled Therapeutic Strategies in Advanced Ovarian Cancer. Despite recent progress in developing novel therapies for advanced malignancies, particularly ovarian, fallopian tube, and peritoneal cancer, which we'll collectively call ovarian cancer, this is a heterogeneous group of diseases. And unfortunately, most of our patients recur and die. So continuing understanding of the underlying biology of these clinically challenging diseases will facilitate development of personalized approaches to surgery and systemic therapy. In addition, we are challenged to delay recurrence, not only delaying recurrence, but improving outcome, improving survivorship, and optimizing the use of agents that we have available in the clinic today. In this OncLive Peer Exchange, my colleagues and I will discuss the latest research and the results of those research findings surrounding the systemic therapy and the surgical management for what we collectively call ovarian cancer and how those implications can be used in the clinic on a daily basis. So I'm Brad Monk. I'm a professor of gynecologic oncology at the University of Arizona College of Medicine in Phoenix, as well as the Creighton University School of Medicine also in Phoenix. I'm also a member of Arizona Oncology, which is part of the US Oncology Network, and I chair the GYN Oncology Research within the US Oncology Network. And participating today are my distinguished friends. Number one, Dr. Oliver Dorigo. Dr. Dorigo is director of the Division of Gynecologic Oncology and director of clinical research at Stanford University Medical Center. Oliver, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Brad. Great, thank you. And then to my right, Dr. Thomas Herzog, the Carolyn Payne Flory Endowed Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine and Deputy Director of the Cancer Institute there in Cincinnati, Ohio. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for having me, Brad. My pleasure. And then Kathleen, who I know is Katie, Dr. Katie Moore, the Jim and Christy Everest Endowed Chair in Cancer Research, the Associate Director of Clinical Research, the director of the Oklahoma TSET Phase I program at the Stevenson Cancer Center, the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City. Katie, thank you. Thank you for having me. And last but not least, Dr. Leslie Randall, Associate Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Director of Medical Education and Gynecologic Oncology Fellowship at the University of California, Irvine. Thank you, Leslie. So thank you for joining us today, and let's get right into it. And let's begin with early stage disease, early stage ovarian cancer. And, and Oliver, let's begin with you. How do you approach the treatment of early stage epithelial ovarian cancer? Yeah, thank you, Brad. I think this is a very important group of patients that, uh, as we know, have a disease with a biology that is very different at times from the later stage diseases, we see more clear cell carcinomas, intermediate cancers, and as we know, those cancers in general have a better prognosis. Uh, nevertheless, I think it's very important to start the treatment with the surgical complete staging throughout the presence of metastatic disease. So I personally uh, might start with a laparoscopy to evaluate the pelvic and peritoneal cavity. Uh, I think it's important to remove both fallopian tubes and ovaries, do a hysterectomy, uh, a lymphadenectomy in the pelvis around the aorta, and an omentectomy. So a, I think standard staging as we uh, uh, accustomed to an ovarian cancer. So Leslie, he says both ovaries have to be removed. Yeah. What happens if the woman wants to have more children? So is fertility sparing, meaning preservation of an ovary, a tube, or the uterus, mm -hmm. that possible, or is that just not ever is that verboten? No, I think it's possible. It's just highly select patients. So one tumor type we didn't talk about is our germ cell tumors or our sex cord stromal tumors, in addition to those other disease biologies. I think if you have the lower grade tumors, early stage tumors, which does require a full surgical staging procedure um, to decide that, then those patients might be eligible for a fertility sparing operation. So Katie, is, are borderline tumors cancer? Is everything that they just said related to a borderline tumor or is a borderline tumor basically more of a benign disease? Borderline tumors exist in a continuum between benign disease and, and malignancy. We don't consider them malignancy. They're not invasive. Okay. Uh, they do um, require uh, follow-up 
Um, they can sometimes be confusing at the time of initial surgery, and so you know, depending on um, the specimen and, and your pathologist, they may not recognize whether or not it's a borderline or an invasive cancer, and so you have to make decisions sometimes in the operating room about staging a patient. And this is where fertility preservation conversations pre-op are critical, right. um, because if that's someone that wants to maintain fertility and, and they meet other criteria, then that's not someone that you want to remove both tubes and ovaries and the uterus on until you absolutely know what their pathology is. Because if it's a borderline, they don't require any additional treatment right. in terms of chemotherapy, um, but they do need to be followed over time because there is a low but present risk of recurrence uh, as a borderline and even more rarely as an invasive low-grade cancer, and the risk of recurrences is tied to the completeness of the surgery. Right.